Hi Peter, can you first and foremost give us analysis of the performance and what happened uh, after you uh, conceded the first goal? No, I can't make an analysis. I've never done that straight after a game. An analysis is based on st st statistics and we need to watch the game again. So I don't speak to the players after the game. Uh, the analysis I cannot give you, but I can give you emotions. Uh, that's a completely different thing. I, I haven't seen exactly how the how the goals were scored. I haven't seen the the TV footage, footage and how we defended uh, in those situations. Emotionally, it's it's tough. First, first twenty five six minutes. I thought we had had enough chances, even though they had something as well. I thought we had the the more dangerous chances to score one one nil. Goals are really important. Uh, the, the greater the opponent, the more important they are. Well, it would have given the game a different uh, outlook. Half time, we can look at some things and 2 0 on a set piece in the second half. In that situation, uh, against a diff uh, difficult opponent like England, it's, it's going to be tough. But then it's 3 and, and 4 0 did not uh, make it uh, a better feeling for us. The effectiveness in, in the first situations, then of course we should should score some, some of the chances we had. We didn't do that. So emotionally, I felt from the bench I was happy how it looked in, in the first few minutes. We played well. We were very direct in our uh, transitional play. Then I don't really remember exactly the first 25, but but I I do remember that was was a good performance in the beginning. If you make the assumption that England was a stronger opponent uh, in this game, where where we worse off than them. Uh, what, what can you draw from that? Um, are they better technically and stronger? I don't know. Um, it's a very skillful team that we played. When you play this type of opponent, you need to be effective. You have to score from the chances that you get. And we had some, some really good chances that we played us applied towards and, and we have to score from those situations uh, but then you can make a deep analysis uh, later on I think England is a, a physically really good team we, we match them physically but then there are different reasons why why it went the way it went uh, in second half Peter, you made more changes in the starting eleven than, than we're used to seeing you do. Can you tell us a bit about your selection and, and how you resonated there? Well, partially, of course, we always look at this game from a perspective that could go to 120 minutes, so we need to have players on the pitch that can play 90 minutes, so you have to look at the players in training. There were some players in in the starting eleven that I knew I was going to have to sub. Um, there are other players that could have started in a different situation. The way we, we started the game in, in the beginning, uh, it felt good. 
many players were really good during that period. So there are many factors that affect the, the game. When you talk about formation, uh, you could always talk about that. Well, I selected the 11 that I thought could give us something in the beginning of the game. You've been struck by COVID and injuries. Uh, how much do you think that affected your tournament? It's hard to say. Uh, we said we took the bronze and, and took the silver in the Olympics. We had almost no injuries. Uh, we had maybe some suspensions in, in the World Cup. We were very, very fresh uh, overall. Uh, it hasn't been like that this tournament. Of course, that has an effect, but but how much? Uh, well, I still think that we have a good squad, and I think the players that have played have, have done a good job. But possibly in these types of games, when you when you play against England in a semi-final, then maybe the the trip here could have been different. So, so everyone would have been fresh and ready to play. So, of course, it might have affected the team, but, but then we could have won. Then again, we could have won uh, despite all this. You spoke with Aslani after the game. What did you say to her? Well, I don't remember. It was uh, more about, well, it's a bit like that for a trainer, for a coach. Uh, you're happy when you win. You feel happier on behalf of the players. But when you're disappointed, uh, like the Olympic Games when we won the silver, uh, you feel more for the players than, and you, f you feel sorry for yourself. So, we know that that they stand before for, for the chance to go all the way, and uh, there was a chance to win this game until we conceded the second goal. So you feel sorry for them. Uh, four goals you conceded. Uh, what's your assessment of the goalkeeper's performance today? Well, it's something that we're going to have to look at during the analysis after the game. Uh, with regards to analysis, I can keep watching the games over and over until June next year. But, you know, we need to move on. But, but I'm gonna, not going to be waiting that long. I'm going to be looking at the game tonight. Then I know more about what it looked like if there was some things that uh, didn't really add up we don't know how is it going to be but it, this could be the last game for Lindahl and Caroline Seger um, she did not look like she was sure of, of her future. Uh, do you feel extra for those players uh, not winning the, the gold medal? Uh, I can't feel for things that haven't happened, so it's, it's impossible. I don't know anything yet, so like always, I'm going to let the players have their time off. And we're going to be playing internationals looking forward. Well, if there are any doubts, I'm going to have to sit down and talk to those players. And uh, they're going to have to make a decision what they want to do. So we'll have to 
cross that bridge when we come there. Come to it. Uh, we'll take an English question on the last row. Thank you. Uh, commiserations, Peter. Um, I just wondered when when you see the atmosphere tonight for England in this stadium, how much how badly does that make you want to see Sweden as one of the co-hosts for the next Euros, and how how yeah, just how much excitement does that wet for you about that prospect? Yeah, it, it's for us. It has been fantastic. This is the third game we play here, so today was the first game when we feel that we were not home home team. And the other games we have good support. We have good support this uh, game also. But uh, today was many more for natural from some holding on England, but. Um, always, I like the atmosphere, and I think it's uh, it's a positive uh, environment. It, 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 it's it's positive to play, even if most of the people uh, want to England to to, to win. And um, you can see the the, the players were inspired of it. And um, um, if you if you look at the if I look at the first 25, 30 minutes, I, I think we were engaged in, in, in the audience also. So it's it's not like um, they boo a better boo. <laughs> when you say boo about the other team, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it, it, it's nothing like that. It's, uh, I, I think it's fantastic. And you can you can see the, the, the audience, it's, um, uh, yeah, uh, children and happy people. And I think that's that's one thing about football. It's um, th that you want. You want to be maybe a coach. You want to play, but uh, you can think all all of the people who is uh, happy for for seeing football. And uh, so it was a great day, except for the lost. Yeah, even though it's um, not turned out the way. The way. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I hope I hope for it naturally, um, because um, I, th I think f for a national team now, um, um, from the World Cup and the Olympics, and um, for we have we have been in semi final for for third time. So I think the interest in Sweden is growing up. So. Uh, hopefully, if we got it's 2025, I think it's going to be um, fantastic. And then we play for our home audience. And just one more, I hope that's okay. Uh, even though it's not worked out for you on the pitch tonight, do, do you think this, these Euros are changing the sport, they're changing women's football? <laughs> Um, we said said before that this is going to be the uh, the best uh, championship. Uh, I think I think uh, Euro is the, if you are compared to World Cup to, to Olympics and Euro, I think the Euro is, is is the best teams. So I I think also that that have been very good games. Um, and I think it's uh, many teams. We met Belgium, uh, England meet uh, Austria. So ev every, everybody's taking steps. So I think it's uh, in, in, in further time, in, especially in Europe, <clears throat> because where I live and <laughs> look at football. But I think it's going to be tougher, tougher and tougher. So. Uh, I think it's good for the football. It's good for for the Euro, uh, and hopefully it's going to be um, for the World Cup also. But Euro is the absolutely hardest tournament to win. Take care. Uh, hi, Peter. You probably surprising a little bit with some of your selection decisions and maybe your formation. Do you think the way that your team played the first half hour justified those decisions? Uh, yeah, I think I think um, it, it's always about who you meet. Uh, uh, so you have you have to put in something that 
that uh, it's like to meet England. And we, we talk about U.S. play in a similar way with 11 good players and uh, how, can we, how can we beat them? And we talked before about the transitions was very important. Uh, and maybe we also, now afterwards I can say that we, we try to get both away Kera Walsh from, from, from playing so much. And I think we, we, we did that very good, especially for the, for the first 25, 30 minutes. And I think that we did, in, in, not in the game against Portugal, I think we have so many open chances that we have the first 25, 30 minutes here. Uh, Portugal was more set pieces and uh, against uh, Belgium was much set pieces and, and things like that. So, so in open play, I, I think we create <laughs> very good chances. And against a good team as England, you have to score. You have to, you have to get that um, kind of uh, opportunity to keep on playing. But when they make one zero and two zero, it's um, it's very difficult. And you had such a, a long unbeaten run coming into this game. I think three years or so. Is it difficult for a group of players who aren't used to being in that situation to react to going two 0 down? I haven't lost it for very long. It's hard for a group who haven't done it to react to going back to a two 0 underlag. Yeah, I, th- I think it's. Um, um, I think when you play, I think you, you, you if you have two under, you want to you want to make a goal, and maybe you take more runs open, and the, the balance is is, is uh, not the best, um, and that open up naturally for, for for England to score three, so it's, it's, it's the balance in in the, one goal changed changed the balance, um, but I think. Um, it was after the second goal that that we were, uh, yeah. It was more open play, and you get self confidence. If we have two zero against some team, yeah, you, you can you can play in in, a, in another way. Um, so, I, th- I think f- for us, when we look at when I look at all the games, I, I think that the most important twenty five minutes of this tournament was against England the first 25 and take that further on and that's the way we want to play but for 90 minutes but uh, you have another team that's also make problems for us and just a very quick one did England do anything different after the first 25 30 minutes to get back into the game yeah, they tried to drop down uh, white something. They they tried to be more in in the in the center, and so we got a little bit problem with that with our center midfielders, um, and um, so that was that was one thing they they sort of change, um, but I didn't I didn't think they create so much about it, but we we got a little more problem and try to make it work in the second half. Um, Peter, you said you're going to watch the game again. Uh, what are you going to do as a group now? Uh, what are you going to do before you leave this camp? Well, I don't know. Uh, it's a typical thing that I don't ask about. I don't ask uh, if we are knocked out what happens next well I, w- uh, I will get to know later this evening we're not going to go home today uh, we will have to see we're going to have a meeting uh, and have a chat it won't be tonight but it's going to be tomorrow